Good evening, everyone. About to bear witness to one of the most spectacular events in professional basketball, the Slam Dunk Contest. This is footage from the first dunk contest, which was held at the 1976 ABA All-Star Game in Denver. The contest was eventually won by the man that has turned the slam dunk into an art. It's the fabulous Dr. J. Julius Irving. Little did anyone know, right at the same time, 1,300 miles away in a little garage in California, two tech nerds were trying to create a first of their own. Waz and I started Apple in my parents' garage when I was 20. So, maybe you guessed it. But those two tech nerds were Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, and the thing they were creating was the first Apple computer, which released April 11th, 1976, a mere three months after the first dunk contest. But before we get to that, let's jump back for a quick history of the dunk. <laughs> The first dunk on record happened around 1910 by a guy named Jack Inglis, who, with no out-of-bounds or backboard at the time, climbed up the court's cage, caught a pass at the height of the rim, and jammed it in. The next guy to really take it to the next level was Joe Fortenberry, who displayed his abilities during the 1936 Berlin Olympics, where he captained the team and took home gold. During this, he dropped a few dunks during games, causing opposing teams to try to put a height regulation of 6'2 for any future games. Joe was 6'7". This is also where they coined the name, as a reporter likened Joe's odd shots as much like a cafeteria customer dunking a roll in coffee. Then, in 1967, dunks were banned in the NCAA, as it was ruled unsafe and to be an unskillful shot. This brings us back to 1976, the year the ban was lifted in the NCAA and backboards were made safer, with more give and flex to the rims. Dunks have since become a staple of the game and are described as the most efficient basketball shot, which brings us back to Apple computers. Uh, what a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. Now, here's the interesting thing about innovation. It doesn't happen all at once, and it starts with the most simple version of whatever it will become. Apple has pushed technology forward in ways very few others in the world have. Why? Some might say it was their internal drive and determination to continually advance things. But really, it's competition in the marketplace. The only problem with Microsoft is they just have no taste. They don't think of original ideas. That's what saddens me. Not that Microsoft is one, but that uh, Microsoft's products don't display more more insight and, and more creativity. Innovation is a product of constraints in finding solutions to problems you either did or didn't know existed. And for Apple, the problem can be summed up in a question. When everything seems to have already been done, how do we make something new? Dunk contests are the epitome of this within sports. The simplest and most efficient execution of a shot forced into a world of creativity and innovation via a contest. The NBA dunk contest has become one of the most exciting and anticipated events in all of sports. The best dunkers in the NBA gather to show up what they've come up with. Remind you of something? We are calling it iPhone. What better way to crystallize competitive motivation than to have a literal competition? Each year, participants are forced to come up with dunks that have never been done before. Beyond that, the barriers to entry have dropped considerably as social media has added to the wide array of talented dunkers who can showcase their innovative approaches. The day we started Apple Computer, IBM was far more powerful in the computer industry than Microsoft and Intel are today. So we should have just given up. I should have just nudged Waz, hey, forget it. We don't have a chance. But we were too stupid to know that. So what's the point of all this? I mean, we know dunks are hard and making great technology is hard too. The point is innovation is a direct result of people who take it upon themselves to improve on things believed to be the best they can get. The next time you think something can't be further improved upon or done differently, don't settle. But don't take my word for it. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Thank you all very much.